Welcome to the Footcast. When we think of Greece, we think of the birthplace of democracy, philosophy, and Western civilization. We imagine a lineage of marble statues representing a pure, classical people. But the genetic story of Greece is perhaps the most surprising and strange in all of Europe. It's a tale not of purity, but of incredible complexity, of a land that has been a genetic crossroads for millennia, creating a population that is a living puzzle. Today, we unravel why Greek DNA is a labyrinth of history, defying simple categories and revealing a past far more turbulent and fascinating than any myth. Our story begins not with the classical Greeks, but with the first great civilizations of Europe, the Minoans of Crete and the Mycenaeans of the mainland. For a long time, their origins were a mystery, but ancient DNA has provided a stunning answer. The Minoans, builders of the great palace at Knossos, were not migrants from Egypt or the Near East as once thought. Their DNA reveals they were primarily descended from early Neolithic farmers who arrived in Greece from Anatolia around 7000 BC, mixed with a small portion of the indigenous hunter-gatherers who were there before them. They were, genetically, a clear and distinct population. The Mycenaeans, the first Greek-speaking people of the mainland, were different. Their DNA shows they were largely Minoan-like, but with a crucial addition, a significant genetic component from the north. This was the DNA of pastoralists from the Pontic Caspian Steppe, the same people who brought Indo-European languages to India and much of Europe. The Mycenaeans were essentially a fusion of the local Minoan-like population and these northern migrants. This means the very first Greeks were already a mixed people, a blueprint for the complexity to come. Around 1200 BC, the Bronze Age collapse shattered the Mycenaean world. Palaces fell, writing disappeared, and populations plummeted. This catastrophic event had a profound genetic consequence. It isolated people. In the mountainous landscape of Greece, small communities were cut off from one another. For centuries, even millennia, villages in different valleys or on isolated islands experienced what geneticists call a founder effect and genetic drift. They became genetic islands, each developing their own unique set of markers. This is why, even today, the DNA of someone from a remote Macedonian village can be distinctly different from someone on a small Aegean island. The deep, ancient diversity wasn't blended away. It was preserved in pockets, creating a stunning microdiversity within a small geographic area. If the collapse created isolated pockets, the next 3,000 years were a relentless series of genetic waves that crashed over the entire peninsula. First came the Dorians, another wave of Greek-speaking people from the north, adding another layer to the genetic tapestry. Then came the Persian Wars, which, while not a major migration, brought armies from the east into contact with the Greek world. The conquests of Alexander the Great had a paradoxical effect. They didn't just spread Greek culture outward, they brought a flood of genetic material back in. Soldiers, administrators, and traders from Egypt, Persia, and the Levant settled in Greek cities. Then came the Roman Empire, integrating Greece into a vast Mediterranean network. This was followed by perhaps the most significant genetic influx since the steppe migrations, the Slavic migrations of the 6th to 8th centuries. Large populations from north of the Danube moved into the Byzantine Empire, and their genetic signature is strongly present, especially in northern Greece. And the waves kept coming. The establishment of Venetian and Genoese colonies brought Italian DNA to the coasts and islands. Centuries of Ottoman rule introduced Anatolian, Balkan, and even some Caucasian elements. The strange result a missing Roman era, and unexpected connections. All this mixing creates the strangest results. 
one of the most puzzling findings for geneticists is what's called the missing Roman era in Greek DNA. While historical records show significant movement during the Roman period, the genetic impact from Italy itself is surprisingly low. This suggests that the Romans who governed and settled in Greece were not primarily from Italy, but were stem cells from other parts of the empire like the Balkans and the East, further complicating the mix. Furthermore, Greek DNA shows unexpected connections. A Greek islander might share more DNA with the Sicilian or a Cypriot than with a mainland Greek, a relic of the maritime trade networks of the Minoans, Venetians, and others. A person from northern Greece might have genetic cousins in Bulgaria and Romania, a legacy of the Slavic migrations. There is no single Greek genetic profile. There is a spectrum, with each region telling a different story. This genetic strangeness isn't just a historical curiosity. It has real-world implications. Greece has one of the highest rates of rare genetic disorders in Europe, particularly thalassemia. This is a direct result of its history. The long periods of isolation in small communities allowed certain genetic mutations to become common. This founder effect means that doctors in Greece have to be aware of a unique set of health challenges that differ from the rest of Europe. The DNA of Greece is a living record of every major event in Mediterranean history. It is a palimpsest, where the writings of the Minoan, the Mycenaean, the Dorian, the Roman, the Slav, and the Ottoman are all still visible, layered one on top of the other. It is strange because it refuses to be simple. It is the genetic embodiment of the region itself, a crossroads, a fortress, and a bridge all at once. The strangeness of Greek DNA shatters the myth of a pure classical race. The people who gave us Plato and the Parthenon were themselves the product of endless journeys and mixtures. The strangeness of Greek DNA is its truth a complex, beautiful, and deeply human story of resilience, adaptation, and connection. It shows us that our identities are not defined by purity, but by the rich and intricate tapestry of our shared past. Thank you for exploring this genetic labyrinth with us on the Footcast. If you were amazed by the strange and complex story of Greek DNA, please help us on our mission to uncover more hidden histories by subscribing to the channel. We're working hard to reach a thousand subscribers, and your support makes all the difference. What other genetic mysteries should we solve? The DNA of the Vikings? The roots of the Celts? Let us know in the comments below. Share this video with anyone who loves history. And until next time, keep exploring.